In today's video, we are making Jacqueline's favorite Valentine's Day pasta. It is a shrimp mac and cheese with a roasted garlic sauce. It's fire, let's go. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of More Seasoning. I'm your host Farnham and Valentine's Day is right around the corner. I know a lot of you are panicking, looking for a bomb recipe, but I got some special help from my fiance because she encouraged me to make, I'll just let her tell you, come on in babe. Hey, so what was your idea for Valentine's Day? Okay, so there's this place in Tampa that used to have the most amazing, like the best macaroni and cheese with shrimp in it. And they stopped making it like a year and a half ago and I've literally been craving it for the past year and a half. I found the recipe. So this is not me from scratch. This is definitely inspired by Cinebistro's shrimp mac and cheese, but it is on another level. It's literally like a bougie movie theater that we have here. There's like five to like six of them in the United States, I think. Yeah. And it was like one of the best dishes of all time. So he remade it, but I have to say, I think it's even better, which is crazy, because I used to go there and watch movies I hated just to get this dish. <laughs> it is so delicious. Like this is a foolproof recipe. So cheesy, so creamy, the bacon, the shrimp. Oh. It's perfect for Valentine's Day, nice and comfort food. Yeah. Not too heavy, not too rich, so you're still able to after it's over. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> hey, she means exercise, <laughs> cardio. Oh, real quick, before we get into the B-roll, I No, let me do it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, tell us what you wanna see next. If you want simple seasoning, if you want more seasoning, if you want something quick and easy. Mm. I personally want enchiladas next. If you guys want enchiladas, give this video a thumbs up, and do not forget to subscribe. It's the most important thing, and let's get into it. Okay. B-roll. All right, before we get into the shrimp mac and cheese, let's go over the ingredients real quick. You're gonna do de-shelled, de-veined raw shrimp, uncured bacon, Italian parsley, a white onion, garlic. We're gonna roast this bitch. it's gonna be amazing. A shallot, a block of Parmesan cheese, a block of Fontina cheese, and a block of white cheddar. Heavy cream, dried bay leaf, cornstarch, cavatappi pasta, chicken stock, not chicken broth, not as much flavor in it. White wine, I'm using Pina Grigio, and for everybody out there, the alcohol will cook out of it. Avocado oil, a rib of celery, and lastly, some flour. Also, chives, forgot to say chives. All right, so the main thing that separates this mac and cheese from other mac and cheeses is we have to make a garlic cream sauce. That is gonna be the base of this. It's gonna take a little bit of work, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roast a whole head of garlic. So we've got a decent sized sheet of aluminum foil, then we're going to peel all of the shell off of the garlic. Once we do, we're gonna go ahead and cut the tips off of each clove. We're gonna wrap that garlic up in the aluminum foil, and then we're gonna add a few tablespoons of avocado oil to it. Once we do, we're gonna wrap it up, and we're going to bake it at 400 degrees for 35 minutes. Okay, so for everybody that might be tripping over the 35 minutes, by the time you're done prepping everything out and you start cooking over there, the roasted garlic will be ready, I promise. The timing all works. The next thing we're gonna do is an onion. Cut the top off, then we're gonna take that outer shell off. We're gonna hit it with some vertical cuts, some opposing cuts, fine chop that, scoop it up into the bowl. All right, next we're gonna cut up half a shallot. We're gonna cut our shallot in half, cut the top off. We're gonna run our knife and peel that outer shell off and hit it with some vertical cuts, some opposing cuts, and a fine chop, scoop it up into the bowl. Next, we're gonna finely chop half a rib of celery. Cut the white off the bottom, cut that stalk in half, then we're gonna run some lines down it vertically and hit it with a fine cross chop, scoop it up into the bowl. All right, next we're just gonna dice up two tablespoons of parsley stems. Keep your parsley stems held together and you're just gonna run your knife down them, scoop them up into the bowl. All right, next we got some cheese to shred up. The recipe does call for Gruyere, but I just think it makes it a little too stinky, and not everybody likes stinky cheese. That's what we also call our dog. Stinky cheese, what are you doing? See, she looked. All right, anyway, one cup of grated parm. Grab your box grater, and on the second to smallest setting, cut the rind off our parm, and then we're going to shred it up into a bowl. All right, real quick, I told you you would have time. The garlic just finished. Let's pull it out so we can show you what it looks like. Listen, so we just pulled it out. This is gonna be hot. You're gonna have to let it cool down. Listen, you can literally hear it bubbling. Yeah, 
Don't touch that till it cools down. Give it about five minutes. All right, next we're gonna shred up half a cup of our Fontina cheese. Again, on the second smallest setting, we're just gonna grate half a cup. All right, down to our last cheese, we're gonna do half a cup of white cheddar. On that box grater on the same setting, we're just gonna shred half a cup up. In with the Fontina. All right, our roasted garlic has cooled down. You guys gotta see this, seriously, check it out. Ooh, yes. I'm telling you, that's the difference maker in this sauce. All we have to do is squeeze half of these cloves out into a bowl. All right, next we gotta make a quick slurry. Take half a tablespoon of cornstarch and one tablespoon of water, mix it up. All right, next we gotta prep our parm crisps. What's that? It's this. And yes, they are as fire as they look. All we gotta do, preheat the oven, 350. Next, baking sheet, parchment paper, mixing bowl, half a tablespoon of flour, and we have our Parmesan that we grated up earlier and we're just gonna put about three quarters a cup or 75% of what we have into this bowl. And all we're gonna do is mix. Go ahead and get that flour incorporated in there. It's just gonna help these toast up nicely. Now it's super easy from here. This is enough to make about six. So we're just gonna make little flat circles of our Parm and flour mixture on the parchment paper. As you can see, I've got six little piles of our flour on our Parm and we're just gonna cook it 350 for 12 minutes. Let's go. Okay, I swear it's the last prep work you gotta do. We just gotta cut up some chives. All you're gonna do is fold your chives up real tight, then we're just gonna run our knife through them, scoop them up into a bowl. It has been 12 minutes and our Parmesan, I don't wanna touch that, it's hot. Our Parmesan crisps are done. You think I can do vanchocos? <laughs> no. This is basically a chip made of cheese. It's like a cheese it, but better. Parmesan crisp. I know you heard that. Your prep work is officially done and we're gonna make this pasta right now. Let's go. All right, so here we are over at the stove. Now this is gonna look a little overwhelming, but I want you to think about the cooking process in two parts. We have to make our garlic cream sauce, which is gonna take most of this up. And then later, all we have to do is cook bacon, pasta, shrimp, and that's it, because we have our garlic cream sauce that's already done. So this is what your setup is gonna look like for the garlic cream sauce. We've got a mesh sieve that's gonna drain our sauce into this measuring cup. You can also use a coffee filter. We've got four of our liquids in the back. We've got our fresh ingredients, our slurry. Next to that, we have got a medium-sized saute pan. Okay, and for the second part, we've got a deep pot that the shrimp and the bacon will be cooked in. I've got a pot with some hot water that will boil our pasta. And next to that, I've just got our cheese, our shrimp, our bacon, our pasta pasta and a cutting board for our bacon to dry. All right, so let's start with our garlic cream sauce. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of avocado oil in here. We're gonna put this on a low heat because we're gonna sweat these veggies. And basically what that means is we're gonna slowly cook these, not caramelize, and it's gonna pull all the flavor out into that oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all in here. We're just gonna mix this up again on a nice low heat. We wanna get that oil all over all of our veggies. It should be just enough to get them all covered. All right, so every minute to minute and a half, we're just gonna stir this up, make sure we get everything moving around. I'm not even gonna play games with you. This is gonna take about eight or nine minutes. That's what the flame looks like, like I said, super low. Again, this is a slow process of extracting all that flavor out called sweating, so we'll check in a little bit. Okay, as you can see, we're coming right up on the eight minute mark right now. All of our onions are nice and translucent. It's very aromatic. That celery is a nice bright green. All right, so it's been about eight minutes. We're still sweating. Now we're gonna add our parsley stems, our roasted garlic, and a bay leaf. Now we're only gonna leave this stuff in here for about a minute, but let's go ahead and smash our roasted garlic down just so we can kind of move those flavors around and extract. All right, next, we're going in with a quarter cup of white wine. Go ahead and give this a thorough mix. And all we're gonna do is cook this until that wine is almost completely evaporated out of here. All right, so as you can see, we're still on a very low heat. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, this is gonna take about three minutes for all of this wine to cook out of here. Uh, as you can see, there's not very much left as is, but just keep it moving. All that steam is liquid evaporating, so you're in a good place. All right, all that wine is almost evaporated, so we're going in with one cup of our chicken stock, and then we are actually gonna turn this up to a medium heat. While we're waiting on this to come to a boil, just make sure you go ahead and mix around. Make sure there's nothing stuck to the bottom of there. We don't want anything getting burnt or caked on. All right, once it comes to a boil, now we're gonna add in our slurry, and basically all this is gonna do is it's just gonna help to thicken this up. So let's go ahead and mix that slurry in. 
just like that. And as soon as we get that slurry in, we're gonna add one cup of our heavy cream. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mix in our heavy cream to turn this into a cream sauce. All right, so all we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna keep it on a medium heat on a simmer and we are gonna reduce this by 25%. It's gonna take about five minutes, so we're just gonna let this continue to simmer and bubble and evaporate all those liquids in there, and it's gonna concentrate those flavors. We'll check in in five. All right, now follow me. We're about to make this cream sauce for real. So we're gonna grab our pan. We can see that it has definitely reduced. It is thickened up. We're gonna go right into this bowl. All of that celery, those parsley stems, all of that. So there's two options here. You can just pour it straight into here, that way you separate all of the stuff that's in there out and we just have the sauce. Or you could put it in a blender or get a stick blender. These are not very expensive and we can blend it and then run it through here just to get as much of that flavor out as possible. But you do not have to do this. All right, here we go inside and we're just gonna pulse. All right, so I pulsed this for about 30 seconds and now I'm just gonna pour it right into my sieve. All right, so this is gonna give you about a cup and a half of straight cream sauce once you take all of this extra stuff out of here. I'll move it around a little bit, but I'm gonna let it slowly drain so I can start cooking the bacon and the shrimp. All right, so for everybody out there who's like, hey, what about the parm? Well, guess what? I forgot it. Yeah. You know what? It's all going to the same place at the end of the day. So I'm just gonna put this in with the other cheeses when we're gonna put it on the pasta. Let's get to the shrimp. Let's get to the pasta. Let's go. Let's get to the bacon. We're gonna take four pieces and we're gonna cut them in half. All right, so we're gonna put this in here at a medium heat. You don't have to wait until the pan's hot. If we put them in while it's cool, it'll allow the fat to render a little better. All right, so about three minutes has gone by. As you can see, that bacon is starting to just brown. We're going for a crispy on here because we wanna be able to cut it and sprinkle it on top. All right, about another two minutes has gone by. We're just gonna flip one more time back to the original side for another 30 <laughs> seconds. Jamari jumping around, this shit is popping. Ah! Maybe 15 more seconds, this is gonna be perfect. All right, so all you're gonna do is pull that bacon out, throw it on a paper towel, on a little cutting board or a plate. All right, so as we're waiting for our pasta water to come back to a boil, you can see we've got about a cup and a half of our garlic cream sauce, and this is all that's left over. That's all those veggies that were not blended up. Like I said, this just helps to get a little more flavor. You don't have to blend, but uh, that's that's the result that you're looking for right there. All right, so we're gonna do half a pound or half a box of our cavatappi pasta. Let's go. Give this a little mix, that way we don't stick. And there's a reason I didn't salt the water today. It's because all of the cheese that we're gonna add to the sauce is a little salty and I wanna be able to control that. All right, so our pasta is gonna continue to cook in our garlic cream sauce, so we wanna pull it out al dente. I'm gonna let this cook for six minutes. Right now, it's gonna take about four for the shrimp to cook. Let's do it. I got about half a pound of shrimp going in here. We'll move these guys around. Get them nice and spread out. All right, so it's been about two and a half minutes. We're gonna go ahead and flip all these shrimp. And yes, you are correct. We are cooking the shrimp in this bacon grease because that's where the flavor's at. We're gonna let them cook on the second side until they get nice and a little bit of browning. All right, so our pasta is done. It has been about five minutes on our shrimp. Now we're gonna leave this on a medium heat and we're gonna add our pasta in. So we'll start right here just so I don't overdo the pasta. And now we're gonna go in with about one cup of our garlic cream sauce. We're gonna let this come to a boil. Be afraid to give that a little mix, get all those flavors going in there. The smell that is coming off of this pasta is insane. All right, we got our boil going. Now I'm gonna add in our Parmesan, our white cheddar, and our Fontina cheese. Go ahead and get some melting action in here. All right, I just chopped up about half that bacon. It's going right in here just like that. Let's give it a mix. And I definitely would like to see this a little bit more cheesy. All right, I still got it on low. I got a white cheddar block. I'm just gonna add in enough until it gets that consistency that I like. Oh yeah, and that's turning into that perfect, beautiful, soupy mac and cheese that we like. Now we're gonna add in some black cracked pepper. Give that a mix. All right, now we're gonna add our shrimp back in. Mix those boys up. Could use a little bit more bacon. A little bit more of that black cracked pepper. I mean, that looks damn good. Okay, so I said I wanted to be able to taste it and control the salt levels because there's so much salt in the cheese. So let's give it a taste. It's, damn. Okay, that's really good. I am gonna add a small pinch of salt to this just to enhance it a little bit since I did take that Gruyere out. Ladies and gentlemen, this smells incredible and it is time for us to plate and do the taste test. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I know it took us a while to get here, but it is time for the taste test. Bringing back my bugs. She's tired, it's been a long day for her, Damn, so. I'm her, so sleepy. Her energy's low, but all you have to do is just take one bite and let me know what you think, okay. if it's everything that you had hoped it was. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. So in your exhausted, worn out opinion, is this everything you remember that it was? 100%, yes. Is this a good Valentine's it Day? It is an incredible Valentine's Day dinner, yes. This is an any day dinner, this is amazing. It's like rich, but not like to the point that it's gonna hurt your stomach. It's yeah. so full of flavor, cheesy, the texture of the shrimp is perfect, the bacon is like, Salty, savory, creamy, cheesy. I mean, what can you not love about it? I'm just gonna be, go out there and be honest and say it. I would rather go to Cine Bistro and order this if they still had it than make it because mm -hmm. this is, it, it's a process. Yeah. It's complicated. This is not for the novice. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Star scale, this is a five. No question. Five for you? It's a five. It's a five for me. It's I mean, five. it is really, really good. It is so good. It's complex, it's got depth, it's it's bomb. So okay. if this is too complicated, there's a ton of other recipes. I'll throw it in the cards over here. Valentine's Day pasta ideas you can do for a little more beginner level. The steak and lobster. The steak and lobster, lobster is also pasta. amazing. The lo oh, Those the are very much pasta. like letting someone know you love them. I like the lobster pasta more than I like this personally. No, the lobster pasta is the best pasta I've ever had in my entire life. This is bomb, but this is so good, but that one's the best pasta I've ever had. Yeah, that's fire. Well, there you guys have it if you made it this far it means you enjoyed the content please scroll down hit that like button hit that subscribe button and please drop a comment below and let me know if you think you will take the journey to make this my name is Farnham this is Jacqueline this is more seasoning and we out